de-escalation therapy. Now, this, this is more and more common and more and more popular in society now. People saying, this can cure me. It ain't cheap. Um, the solution? Cover it. Cover it uh, by uh, public funding. Well, you know, the, the problem, though, is that when you start going down this road of we don't have uh, tests and we can't afford this, and, and, and frankly, you know, it's a bit rich that the chiropractic profession should suggest that they can't afford to do studies. They've had tons of opportunity, and God knows they've got the money to spend on the Lana Dale Lewis inquest and all sorts of other the legal real adventures. Chiropractic. What, say collation, for example. There's not a okay. collation society. Where well, would the, the money... Stu the studies have been done, Michael. That's the problem. Yeah. They, well, this is, a, you know, frankly, with all due respect, this is a bit of a ruse. This is the ongoing study ruse that's used by people in alternative medicine all the time. We're waiting for the next results to come out. The results are in. What I'm interested to know is how you can offer a therapy that's been shown not to be effective, that the literature says is not effective, that the major medical organizations say is not effective, and ask people to pay for it. I have a suggestion for you. If the evidence isn't in, and it's an alternative therapy, mm -hmm. then I'll pay you with alternative money. And then we'll move on from there. You've used that line before, haven't you? Mm -hmm. It's a good one, though. Well, studies all, are in? First of all, the little study that's been done has been studied and initiated by people that was known to be opponents of chelation. And Is that true? Yeah. Well, that's the Galileo yeah. defense. We'll get yeah. to that later. And therefore, therefore, the study so far really is, there's a lot of holes to criticize. And then therefore, it's, that's why, and if a study is already done, NIH would not put 30 million try to fund another bigger study if it's already concluded. Are you, are you saying doctors who, I assume it was doctors who conducted this survey were lying? Well, everybody has a certain bias, and then... Uh, but hold on, if collation therapy, this is not about uh, getting hair to grow on, on your head. If it can save someone's life, it's incredibly, profoundly important if doctors are lying to say it doesn't work when it does. No, no, it's not lying. It's the designing of the study. Example, the one relatively small study out of the category have done, uh, I don't know the details, that there is enough internet opinion from various people that are doing collation that is good decision to analyze this. First of all, between the, what we call the control group and the treatment group, uh, to start with. Yeah, but, but, but doctor, it, it leads to the same yeah. thing. Um, if, if doctors doing the study know that collation therapy might be effective and in some way have influenced the control group uh, or, or the statistics or the research to, to indicate it doesn't work, that means people are dying. That's, that's quite an accusation. And I mean, I internet opinion, no, no, I can no, find no, internet no, opinion okay. to support anything. No, no, no. I think always there's always criticisms about study. It's a design of study. Uh -huh. And then, so you can choose a short observation period and, and to compare at the end of a short observation period. Yeah, I understand. And say there was no significant but differences. It, but it's surely the same conclusion. Yeah. No, but Michael, you have, to, you have to look at a study. You have to look at the research methodology, the inclusion criteria, yep. the patients they're allowing in. And often the researcher has a bias going in. That's what Fred's saying. We saw this with Linus Pauling when he said vitamin C could possibly suppress cancer growth. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, we're going to take end-stage cancer patients who have a few days to live, and we're going to give them an IV of vitamin C. See, it didn't work. Vitamin C doesn't work in, the, in a study with cancer patients. Nothing could work with those kinds of cancer But that's supporting patients. the comment I made, that, that, that you are alleging that doc people of science and doctors are, are Of course are they lying. do, and they're, and they're funded by special interests. I mean, most of the medical journals and medical education is largely funded by pharmaceutical companies. And so I don't blame most medical doctors for having a bias against the alternative practitioner simply because they're conditioned to think in a certain way the same thing that re the way that registered nutrition the dietitians who come out of Guelph University mm -hmm. are often taught that supplementation is a waste of time it produces expensive they're not exposed to the literature at a young enough age that says why don't you read the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition and the Journal of Nutrition and Cancer and then the Journal of Nutrition Reviews as I do every every month mm -hmm. and see the published data to demonstrate that if a man has early stage prostate cancer Giving that individual vitamin D at 2,000 IUs a day, that's a cell, you can't get that from food alone, can slow the doubling rate of the PSA very substantially and decrease risk of future metastasis. Now, in a man that has a serious heart condition that can undergo a radical prostatectomy, that type of information becomes very important. What can you do to slow down the progression of the disease so they have a longer lifespan and decrease sure. distal I could hear you sighing in the The evidence there. is there.
Well, I, you know, I, I just love this because this is science talk, and I find it really great because alternative medical practitioners pull out science talk whenever they want to make their case, and yet they ignore all the tenets of science all the time. I, I you know what? Like, like let, let's not talk about individual studies because we go down a rabbit hole. Let's just talk about what works and what doesn't work, and what these two gentlemen who have just talked a lot about science are willing to say is okay or not okay. On Dr. Hughes' site, there's all kinds of stuff on the site, including taking out mercury amalgam fillings in people's mouths, saying that it's of health benefit. Um, is iridology good? Is reflexology a reasonable approach to medicine? Is homeopathy an effective way to treat patients? What you tell us, you're the science guy, you tell me. Here's, I'm just a here's, here's stupid reporter. Because you've never practiced with real patients. No, I've never practiced medicine. medicine. I'm just using so my rational a, mind. As someone who saw 10,000 patients as a chiropractor, and, and I actually started in an office with three medical doctors who threw all their patients at me. So that was a nice little system, a chance to test can alternative practitioner work with traditional medicine. It worked very well. So I saw 10,000 patients in my practice career. I have a good working knowledge of what chiropractic can do and what it can't do, because I do it. The same way that Fred says, this person is likely to benefit from chelation, and this heart patient, I don't think so. They start, they start to understand better the inclusion criteria, just from clinical experience. I don't work with iridology. I, I don't work with other forms of alternative medicines. I can't comment on homeopathy. But I can say, but I can say this. Go um, ahead. Sorry. The few items you work on, that's why I haven't adopted in my practice. I you would try to use my best conscious, best Remove intelligence. Remove the fillings, of all the fillings. Oh yes. Remove okay. Fillings. Uh, if you touch on subject, okay, about those field objects, because I haven't crossed and convinced me that they're useful. Therefore, I have not adopted a few measures mm -hmm. that you do, iridology and all that. Maybe I'm underexposed to the looking area. into the eye and finding out what yeah. is wrong. Yeah. You so say you haven't embraced it. I mean, I haven't embraced it. Yeah. Have because you, is there a possibility you might? Uh, I have exposed myself more to knowledge before I embrace it. Right now, it hasn't crossed my logic. But, but on, doctor, I mean, there are all sorts of theories out there that the Earth is made of cheese, the Holocaust didn't happen, whatever. Yeah. They're there. I will never embrace them because they're obviously, from a self-evident truth, they are loony and they are crazy. I think it should looking be looking into the eye and finding out what is wrong with you. I thought. think it can be. If somebody can use it as one little piece of evidence in the context of the whole evidence of looking at the person, I think, example, Chinese use tongue diagnosis. Uh, they have boiled down to in the tongue there's certain representation, but I use it, but I don't use it as the only single evidence. Mm. Therefore, I look at the in context right. of every other angle, and then this will give me one extra. We're going to have to break, but I, here, here's, and, and I, I, I'm sort of in the middle on this, but here's the problem I have that because it has uh, the, the description or definition alternative, people will say it may be acceptable when it should be rejected immediately. Just because it's thought to be alternative doesn't mean it has any, any relevance or I'd any reason. I'd love to come back to the bubble mercury issue before we forget. Right, we will. You're not touching my Great. feelings, though. So. Uh, big crown here as well. Oh, English dentistry. Back in a few moments on the Michael Corrin <laughs> Show. And, and I eat too much candy. Don't go away.